Uh, there's one thing I haven't spoken about, which is the main man that we're going to be talking to today, Keen Lewis Potter, the main man for Hull City. I'm delighted to say that Keen joins me right now down the line. You just finished off training, haven't you, Keen? How, how are you doing? Everything fine? Fighting fit? Yeah, good, mate. Um, ready for the weekend now. Yeah for the weekend indeed well we will dive into that game against stoke city which um i'll, I'll reveal a little bit later on now it's kind of a bit of a poignant game uh, uh, for hull city um but let's talk about you first of all uh, you sort of were with hull city on the way down um two seasons ago and had a cracking season last season 13 goals six assists um how let's talk about last season first um how much did you enjoy that you know being a lad from hull and you know, bringing silverware to to Hull City. How how was last season for you? Um, it was well, can't really put it into words. It was unbelievable. Um, I think throughout the full season was excellent. Um, we had a little dip at one point, and then we got back together. Um, yeah, and I think in the end, um, fully deserved champions. Yeah, absolutely. I think you were. I mean. A lot of players, actually, I mean, when we're talking about this season and, and the sort of the change up there, um, a few players you've had that have, have been injured for you guys, which is a big part of it because you had a really steady team last season. You know, like the Wilkes, Josh McGuinness, George Honeyman was one of the best players in the division, uh, in my eyes, certainly with the assists he's providing. And then yourself as well. Look at these. That's, that's slightly Henri-esque, uh, that last finish there. Um, but we're going to talk about Ronaldo, actually, at some point, because I know you're a big fan about uh, of Ronaldo. But moving into the championship this year, great start for you and you know your own performances you played every single game i guess uh, the first question is that that great victory we're seeing it now the win against preston first game of the season do you feel like you maybe you almost like started a bit too well is, is that a thing do you, is that an excuse that you can maybe give yourselves or not um no i don't think so i think well like you said i don't think you can start too well um we got off to a great start and yeah, we've we've not had the best results since, but I think it, for us, it's just about bouncing back and um, getting points on the board again. Mm. Are you trying to kind of look, keep looking back to that game and, and see which bits went well to allow your time to, to sort of move forward and get it right? Or is it just something that you kind of need to draw a line with and, and move on? Uh, I think you can always look back on them games and, like you say, see what you did well. Um, but again, we always have to look about what we can improve on and what we haven't done so well in the past few games and yeah it's definitely something to build on yeah um let's let's talk about your role in this team then because at sort of last time round, you know you did have 21 appearances on in the season that you went down but so young at that point you're still very young right now but i think it's fair to say and i think you i would imagine you would agree that you feel like you're you know one of the leading lights in the team you know one of the main men in terms of the output that you need to contribute to to keep whole city in the division how are you finding it being in the championship and being one of those players that you know the other guys are, are looking to 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 get you goals and and results yeah i think as a forward player you're always expected to score and create chances or create goals and i think for me i really i honestly don't feel the pressure of doing that because i believe that's my job and that's a forward player's jobs um as well as the midfielders but yeah um looking back on two seasons ago it was it was difficult for all of us um obviously after january it was it wasn't so great but again last year we we built our way back up and like I said early was deserved winners of league one and yeah this season it's been a tough start, but I know we can all bounce back. What What would you say the the big difference is between League One and Championship? Um, for us personally, lately it's been defending our box and scoring goals on the other end of the pitch. Um, in between the both boxes, we can say it's been we've been brilliant, and it's just yeah, defending set pieces has been massive for us. Um, we can say it's cost us a few games this season. Um, but as well as that, it's when we go up to the top end of the pitch, it's being able to put our chances away. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, it's backed up by the numbers, actually. We're looking at the XG when it comes to set pieces. Uh, your XG, Hull City's, for the season is, is 1.9. You should have conceded two goals so far this season. You've actually conceded six. So that kind of highlights maybe that just that jump up in quality. I think sometimes people go, oh, it's in the lower leagues that you're going to see it being all about set pieces. But that's not the, the you know, it's fine margins, isn't it, in the championship? So um, you're, you're right in what you're, you're saying there. Um, the main aim, I guess, this year is is to stay up. Um, how would that feel for you as a you know a, a lad from Hull to be able to kind of to 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 keep the team up? How would that feel? Well, I think as a squad, as with the team we've got, I think we've we've got everything we need to climb the table and get as high as possible. Um, we've all got our aims. We just want to finish as high up as possible and. From the start of the season, we've always said our aims are to reach the top six, and until until we can't get there anymore, it's just finishing as high as we can. Yeah, and do you think it is just that one moment? You know, you look into this weekend, the game against Stoke City, just that that one, not even just performance, because I think some of the performances have been there. I'm a QPR fan, and and we, you know, are not me, but obviously the guys, they beat you guys three nil, but it wasn't a three nil game. It was incredibly tight for a long period of the time. And then a couple of moments happen and it changes. Does it feel like it is, you're right on the edge of something? You just need to kind of maybe get that little bit of luck this weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like you said, then it's, it's hundred percent that I think it's, it's maybe gone on for a while now, but, once we get that result, once we get that victory, it'll it'll all start coming together. Um, mm. The same happened last season, obviously in League One, um, a few defeats, draws, and as soon as we got that win, we we went on a roll. And I think, I think back end of the season it was fourteen unbeaten, fifteen unbeaten, and yeah, I think if we can do the same this season, it'll be a great season for us. Yeah, uh, let's have a look at your development then, because we did. Want, I did want to talk about Ronaldo a little bit. We were chatting just before we went on uh, on stream today about kind of the players that that you like. Ronaldo's he's he's one of your your heroes, isn't he? And I think you can. There's elements of it in your game. I, I know you're probably too humble to say it yourself, but what do you what do you love so much about um, Ronaldo? And it, it, what aspects of his game are you trying to kind of implement yourself? As everyone can see, he's. Um, is... His main threat is scoring goals. Uh, he's always in the right place at the right time to put the ball away. Um, but as well, his his work ethic um, off the ball or when his team are in possession, he's always he always seems to be in the right places. Um, and yeah, like I say, just sticks the ball away for fun. Mm. And and we were talking as well. So FA Cup, you get whole uh, whole city get Man United. You're you're going after that shirt. I just want to break down. How does that work? You got you know Jacob Greaves fancies it. You know Matt Ingram fancies that Ronaldo shirt. How Josh McGuinness wants that wants that Ronaldo shirt. How are you going about it? Because I know you know obviously you're you're a whole city man. You know you've been there since you were 14. But I know Man United were in your heart as well at one point. And Ronaldo's the guy. I just love to know what is your strategy to get that shirt if that day ever comes. Um. Well, like I say, <laughs> it's telling the lads I'm having it. Um, get there as quick as possible. But when you said then, Matt, <laughs> how, how do you think that conversation said, would go? Um, well, like you said, he said about Matt Ingram. Then um, I don't know. I'm going to get past him, but no, I'll have to. I guess you, you'll probably to... well, yeah, because he might be closer, but you're quicker. You're much. I, I, I think Matt would allow allow them, me to say that. So I think you'd have a, a chance there. But I think you can see it in in the game between you know in your game that sort of that cutting in on the inside, the great finishing, that focus on on scoring goals for the team, and and all being well. I think you'll you know you'll be able to do that for whole city. I guess the one difference between you and Ronaldo, and this is something I really like about your kind of rise with whole city is. You know, a lot of players we see now, they were kind of, they were released by this team or that team, or they had to go on loan, or there's there's this sort of, there's a lot of big clubs with who kind of stockpile players at times. And for you to kind of be at Hull City and your journey, um, which includes a loan at uh, Bradford Park Avenue, five games there, how, um, how, how do you sort of um, reflect on, your sort of rise up until now because it is a little bit different it's a bit more grounded than other players that you must have, have come across and played against yeah um well playing through the the academy ranks it's obviously you know people from around hull as well and thankfully i've been able to play with um some of the lads now would 
happily call him best mate. You've talked about um, Greavesy, um, Brandon Fleming. Um, but yeah, I think when I look as well, look back at the, the time I went on loan to Bradford Park Avenue, um, it was one of them where I was playing the academy, I was used to playing every game. Um, I went on loan then and it was different for me, it was seeing another side of the game where I'm not playing. Um, I think I started one game for them um, and it was just coming off the bench but yeah, I think it was... For me at that time, at uh, my young age, it was tough for me because I was used to playing all the time and going there and not playing, it was it was different. But I think you have to see that side of the game as well. Yeah, yeah. And I guess maybe that's... Is there a message maybe for for young players out there when you, you know, no disrespect to Bradford Park Avenue, but, you, you know, you're desperate to play for Hull City, you're desperate to play in the Championship, in the Premier League and so on. Is that one of those moments where you, I mean, what was the the emotion with that when you're not getting a game there? Was it was it an element of doubt? Was it an element of kind of realisation of, you know, I, I need to really get my head down here, not saying that you weren't. What was the kind of emotion at that time? Because you've, you know, you've gone from strength to strength. It's amazing. Yeah, I think you can see it in different lights. You can be angry. Um, some people may get upset about it, but yeah, I think it was just about getting my head down, working hard and... Um, proving to the gaffer there that I should be playing and yeah like you said all I, all I can do then was to get my head down and work as hard as possible mm. and I guess that, that's the same you know bringing it to the present day you got Stoke City this weekend and uh, it's the first trip to Stoke since the 7th of March 2020 which was the last game before the pandemic so you sort of coming back now to that, you know, along so much has happened, especially for whole city in particular. And I thought there was a quote here from Grant McCann uh, at the time. Uh, it was uh, the players need to find their inner belief now and stand up. He said after the game, is that the exact same message now for, for whole city, for whole city fans and for the players you got, it's about inner belief for you guys to turn it around. Yeah, I think all those players have got self-belief and um, we all believe in each other. It's just, just finding that click and, once once we can play like we have shown before that we can play together it's you know i think we can beat any team in the league um as we've shown last year um and obviously we've added players this season and who have made us a better team as well and i think yeah like you say is getting that performance right and we'll get there okay there you go there's the message to all city fans we'll get there says keen lewis Potek. uh keen thank you so much uh for spending a bit of time with me and having a chat I've, I've loved it and uh we're all rooting for you best of luck this weekend uh thank you mate thank you very much speak soon mate thanks a lot to keen there what a lovely guy and a cracking player as well if you haven't been keeping an eye on keen lewis potter he really is one of the talents of the championship at the moment you know absolutely tore it up in in league one last season one of the players there and and he's going to go from strength to strength and i think that's those are the kind of players you want you know you want those kind of players at your club the players that you have no doubt that they care about what's happening each weekend and keen lewis potter is certainly one of those thanks for watching guys don't forget every single thursday 4 p.m i will be live on the league of 72 channel talking about all things efl looking at all 72 clubs so if you want to join us for the exclusive access and of course watching some of your favorite goals from your team make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell